Hello and welcome to Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Redat, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we're going to give a reaction to the United States Women's National Team January camp roster drop. But first, a quick reminder to rate Attacking Third on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It is so easy if you're listening right now on any of those apps. You can uh, go ahead and give us a five-star review. It truly helps us out here at Attacking Third. We've got so much love for you, our listeners, who always join us uh, daily, week in, week out, however. Uh, But all of that helps us out so much when you rate and review. So go on over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and drop us a five-star rating. uh, It's official. The United States Women's National Team roster drop, and we got to talk about it, Lisa. I, I, uh, I'm excited. We did a January camp wish list, and we were super ambitious. Uh, but now it's here, and now we get to talk about it uh, together. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good. When we did our, our wish list, Sandra, you're right. We were very ambitious. We were hefty with our our wish list. I think we put like over 35 players on the list. And and we were being conservative in keeping a lot of veterans that have traditionally been consistent members of the national team on our wish list, while also adding a lot of young talent and, and new faces um, to this roster. And so the fact that it dropped and, and when I first glanced over it, I I felt some wins for us. I was like, yes, we were right on a lot of like our young player picks. Now, of course, um, only 25 players named at first, then then we get to 26 ultimately at the end of it all. And we'll dive into all of that. But uh, it's about time. I know like the first week of January, we were like refreshing Twitter, twiddling our thumbs, being like, uh, Vlaco, where's the roster? Which I know a lot of the players were as well and other media members in the space. But it's here. A few updates, a few revisions to the initial roster drop have all been added and changed at this point, and we get to dive into it and discuss it all, and I get to do it with you, which makes me even happier, Sandra. So, you know, happy end of the week. Let's do this thing. Hi, let's get into it. So January camp information for everybody. It's going to be taking place from January the 19th through the 28th. It's going to be taking place in Austin, Texas. It is going to be the first United States Women's National Team action of 2022, although this is not a camp that's going to feature any international matches. So this is a little bit of a a pre-camp before the camp that probably happens around She Believes Cup, which is going to be taking place on February uh, 17th, all the way through, I believe, to the 23rd. So uh, it's going to be uh, just sort of inter, like intermittent sort of uh, kind of uh, squads going against each other. Not a lot of uh, things that are going to be uh, visible in terms of like those scrimmages being broadcast or anything like that. It's just going to be, I guess, what we hear all the time, very highly competitive environments. And uh, probably with a 26-person roster, uh, probably two groups sort of going at it uh, from you know day in and day out. But uh, let's take a look at uh, this uh, initial roster, breaking it down with goalkeepers, defenders, and midfielders, and forwards uh we're gonna go ahead and give all the initial rosters and then the updates that took place uh for goalkeepers it is three it's aubrey kingsbury formerly bledsoe washington spirit casey murphy north carolina courage and Alyssa nair chicago red stars for the defending core it's alana cook Ole rain abby doll camper of san diego wave fc turner davidson chicago red stars amani dorsey of new jersey new york gotham fc emily fox racing louisville fc naomi girma san diego wave fc sofia huerta of ol rain kelly o'hara washington spirit and emily sonnet washington spirit for the midfielder courts lindsey haran portland thorns fc jalen howell racing louisville fc Rose Lavelle, Oil Rain, Christy Mewis, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, <laughs> Samantha Mewis, Kansas City Current, Ashley Sanchez, Washington Spirit, and Andy Sullivan, Washington Spirit. And for the forward core, Ashley Hatch, Washington Spirit, Mallory Pugh, Chicago Red Stars, Margaret Purse, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, Trinity Rodman, Washington Spirit, Sophia Smith, Portland Thorns FC and Lynn Williams, Kansas City Current. I had to throw the clubs on there as well, Lisa, because we still have to get acclimated to some of the player movement uh, and uh, how they got attached to new to new clubs. But right to, right when this roster dropped, uh, there were obviously people taking a look to get their initial impression, uh, give their initial impressions of the roster. But when this one dropped, 
what were some of your main takeaways right when you saw it? Well, as you mentioned, listing the clubs, even you uh, reading through all those names and actually hearing them out loud for me, the, some of the first things that stand out to me are, holy cow, there's a lot of Washington Spirit players, seven in total being added to this list. Uh, they are the 2021 NWSL champions. Uh, it's no wonder that they had the most of any NWSL club players called into this national camp. So that's the first one. And then, of course, as you mentioned, getting acclimated to a little bit of this, like Christy Mewis at Gotham FC, excuse me, Sam Mewis, Lynn Williams at Kansas City Current. Uh, I'm still getting used to that. And also Margaret Purse being thrown into that forward uh, bunch. She's not with the defenders, but um, a, a few different things like definitely jumped out at first because we weren't really sure how this January camp was going to go. I think when you look at um, injuries that players have been through in the past, um, uh, players like Alyssa Nair, who was out since the semifinals in the Tokyo Olympics this summer, she is back on this roster. She's been out with a knee injury for many, many months. So to see her back on is fantastic. Also, Sam U.S. falling into that injury camp as well, uh, who, who took some time off to recover and get strength again throughout her injuries is now back on this list. But Sandra, really, it's it's the age and the new names and the youngness of this roster that is very striking. I believe there are 10 players under the age of 25, which does leave off a lot of our veterans and and we'll dive into that but um when you first read these 25 names before any amendments were made uh is there anything in particular that really jumped off the page to you honestly the biggest thing for me was noticing how many of the names that were on this january camp roster also had time in those australia matches as well uh i think that probably jumped out for me the first you're talking of this 25 26 player roster it was 17 players uh who are now part of who were part of that australia camp are now part of this january camp roster as well and i really liked that that was probably the part that jumped out to me the most it's sort of a little bit of continuity i think mm -hmm. uh, in terms of head coach black and as he's looking ahead to 2023 and starting to get more engaged and more involved with the preparations for that World Cup tournament. So seeing so many of those players sort of kind of translate over and jump on over into 2022, I think is very, very important. Um, and I know that maybe some folks are kind of looking at it and saying, oh, wow, like seven players from, <laughs> from Washington Spirit, that that's a, that that's a whole lot. But you know what? When you have the year that uh, Washington Spirit players went out and had, uh, I think that they're going to get a lot of attention, right, sort of going into uh, the, the the following year or the following season. And, and that's, and that's reflected on this, like, you know, right from the jump. It completely it is. And you mentioned the 17 that came uh, at the end of 2021, but also there's 10 that went to Tokyo on this roster. So, I mean, that's pretty balanced when you think of things. It's not like it's all brand new players. There are 10 o Olympians, most recent Olympians that won bronze in Tokyo also yeah. listed here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and like with most, um, most roster uh, drops, there's, there's typically uh some media availability that comes adjacent to when, you know, the, the, those types of rosters are announced. And head coach Vlako Andonovsky met with the media to talk a little bit about this January camp roster. And there was just more uh, emphasis that was placed on the fact that, listen, there are no international friendlies that are going to be scheduled around this particular January camp, that it is going to just be sort of, uh, you know, just a private kind of, you know, USA versus USA type of mentality uh, to kind of just sort of utilize for further evaluation and really trying to extend opportunities still to players who unlikely get those opportunities as well. But it was really, you're starting to see maybe with this January camp roster starting to see maybe a little bit of a whittling down perhaps uh, because something that came out of those Australia camps from Andonovsky was that, listen, we got to see you in this type of environment, see how you react, see how you perform. And if this is not something that you show that you are able to sustain or, uh, you know, uh, participate in or be able to handle, that's going to let us know right, right away if 
we want to like keep you, you know, a, a part of the ongoing process. So to sort of see that transition uh, between those two um, was was really nice to sort of see him connecting the dots in the media availability, but also within that as well, um, giving some some updates as well. You know, Lisa, you mentioned the return of Sam Mewis, the return of Alyssa Nair as some things uh, that stood out because these are players that had to navigate some some injury, and there were some injuries that really did take place. You know, within that really, uh, you know, the Olympic stretch of games that they were all participating in in the summer of 2021. And it was within that that uh, we also got an update on Julie Ertz. So I was able to participate in some of the media availability and in being able to ask about Julie Ertz, Vlad Gondonovsky emphasized that there was this running theme of the importance of giving opportunity to sort of these younger players, potentially next gen players, uh, but also that Julie Ertz is someone who uh, has had to deal with injury throughout the duration of 20 21 and because of that the where she's at with her injury is that it's it's behind her she's moving past it but now it's more about getting app acclimated to to fitness getting acclimated to game playing and the best way for her to do that is eventually get into uh get into you know involved trainings with club into market etc so uh that she was not going to be part of this current uh january camp but that they'll uh, evaluate her further along down the road because he mentioned that, uh, you know, a, a fully informed Julie Ertz is an asset to the United States women's national team. So she's uh, still in the process of making her, her return, but past the, the, the rough parts, I guess the early stages of, of what that injury would be. But um, something else that came out of that uh, media availability as well, Lisa was uh you know, uh, one of the missing names is was was Kater uh, Katerina Macario, and uh, he also mentioned uh, sort of the you know her not being a part of this camp it didn't really allude to anything else uh, that it was intended for her to be a part of the, this camp. But after conversations uh, between uh, both of the the coaches, you know, for, for United States and uh, you know for for Lyon that it was best in her best interest to sort of stay on with the recent draw against parents St. Germain. And it's a big game for her uh, to prepare for. So she's going to still be in camps there. And in light of that, that there was probably going to be an opening to maybe make an early adjustment to the roster. And as we like, we're reacting to that. We got additional news that there is going to be the return of Morgan Gatra to this uh, roster and uh, Morgan Weaver, another one of those players that had an impact uh, during those Australia friendlies. So a little bit of both, a little bit of like, hey, we're getting, we're going to grab an experienced player, but I'm also going to take one of these players that I'm sort of viewing and keeping in perspective and keeping in my plans uh, further along the line. So I think it's a uh, great to see um these two players come in and it's unfortunate that uh defender Amani Dorsey is going to make her exit from these January camps so after being named uh she's been ruled out due due to injury and that is why these two players are coming into the fold but uh I love to see that they they pitched it as uh, oh the two Morgans coming mm -hmm. into camps it was delightful we talked about our initial reaction and, and the fan base initial reaction was the absence of Katarina Macario because she is a, a young midfielder and a young superstar that has uh, done extremely well with Lyon in, in France and their team and really developing so well over there. And every time she is called in to the national team camp and, and she gets caps alongside players like uh, Andy Sullivan and Lindsey Horan, other superstar midfielders. We know that at the end of 2021, um, Black Wendonofsky talked about maybe putting Kat Macario in the front line as a forward, as, as that number nine striker. So to not have her in this initial roster was concerning for a lot of people. But um, ultimately, the decision to kind of keep her playing with club probably benefits her a little bit in, in her development because uh, Black Wendonofsky knows that Katarina Macario is going to be part of his team moving forward. So he doesn't really need to evaluate her anymore. And now this opens up another spot for a, another player to come in. So initial roster was at 25. Amani Dorsey, uh, defender for Gotham, being injured. That took it back down to 24 players. And then adding the two Morgans in Morgan Weaver and Morgan Gattral brought it up to 26. So so now they're at 26 heading into this camp and we discussed it a little bit. It's going to be a big focus on team 
development and team competition because there are no international friendlies during this camp, which in the past there have been an opportunity to play against other teams and other units, uh, but but this time it's not. So the competition will be extremely, extremely high, and I can guarantee you that those players that just got called in, Morgan Weaver and Morgan Gattral, they're going to make the most of it. I mean, I think they have to, and, and we'll dive into a little bit of them uh, that we're seeing because they are part of those really big call-ups. You know, let's let's maybe take a deeper dive um, into the fact of that there are some some significant absences, right? So maybe let's take a look as we're talking a little bit about Katarina Macario, some of the biggest absences that are on this January camp roster. So it initially was a 25-26 player roster going into this January camp. Maybe uh, compared to other January camp rosters in the past, perhaps a smaller one, right, in terms of the number of players. Talking a little bit about the absence of Katarina Macario, Speaking a little bit about Vlako Andonovsky and how she was uh, meant to be a part of this roster, but due to uh, conversations with uh, Sonia uh, Bonpastor and the current games, the important games coming up with Lyon, that those are the matches that are going to benefit her the most at this time. Uh, and that opened the door for these new arrivals. But it wasn't just Kat Macario, right, on this roster that people were noticing the absence. It wasn't just Julie Ertz, who has uh, yet to sort of make her return or reintegration back with the United States women's national team. People were pointing out a number of players, uh, you know, somebody the captain, right? Like Becky Sauerbrunn, uh, forward Sylvan Heath, Kristen Press, Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino. Uh, but also we're talking a lot about how we're seeing this connection from those uh, those small windows, international windows in, in September, October, where we started to see some of these younger players come into camps, but also that Australia friendly is to close out the calendar year in November, seeing so many of those players come in as well. But one of those players or a couple of those players that weren't on this roster is, is Jane Campbell, uh, goalkeeper from the Houston Dash, and Bethany Balser, the forward out of uh, all range. So uh, I think maybe those are also some players that are kind of considered uh, – a big absent, not just the, the more experienced veteran players, because it sort of sounds like those conversations that have been happening between Black Odinowski and the more experienced players all sort of echo the similar sentiment, right? That these are players that have been with the United States women's national team for a very, very long time. These are players that uh, the coaching staff knows who they are and what they bring right to the team. And in moments like this, in a January camp, the very first bit of uh, action in the year, or even something like November, the very last action of the year, these were opportunities that the coaching staff wanted to utilize and sort of extend to players who maybe aren't normally involved throughout the duration of the U S women's national team calendar. So by not having somebody like an Ertz in, in play, not having somebody like a Kristen press, Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino, uh, he emphasized that it isn't necessarily that they're not a part of the picture or part of the future plans, but that he does want to emphasize the opportunity at this moment for the potential, uh, next wave of players, uh, coming in. But when you're looking at some of the other players, right? Mention Campbell, mm -hmm. mention Balser, right? These are some of those younger players uh, that he had as part of the roster in Australia, and they're not part of this January camp going in the, going into the uh, 2022 season here. I think you have to look at a, a player like Jane Campbell, goalkeeper, who went to Tokyo and had experience there. Um, she was part of that team and called in for a certain reason, even when Alyssa Nair was healthy. Uh, but I think that it's really an opportunistic look. You can't just look at Jane Campbell, but you have to look at in at the end of 2021, heading to Australia, Black Wendonofsky called in goalkeepers, Casey Murphy and, and Bella Bigsby. Bella Bigsby, goalkeeper for Portland Thorns, is not on this list, but she didn't get time to play in Australia. And Casey Murphy did. She played both games and she had a phenomenal run at the end of 2021 for this national team. So her being into this camp is hands down what needed to be done. Um, and if that means that Jane Campbell isn't there, that's a, a big absence, I think. Uh, but 
not not to say anything because it is filled by incredible goalkeepers. I mean, having Alyssa Nair back is huge. She's a fantastic goalkeeper. And I think being sidelined for a lot of this year for Chicago Red Stars um, gave her a different perspective on the game and kind of what she can contribute and how she can grow. And the fact that uh, formerly Aubrey Bledsoe, but now um, – Aubrey Kingsbury is called in. I think that's really important because she was had the golden glove, uh, seen as a very, very good, talented, consistent goalkeeper for Washington Spirit. She fits the mark to kind of slot into this thing and, and into this roster. And for Vlako Andonofsky, he's very much about the sense of reward good behavior in, in that sense or good play, good consistent play. And that's no surprise that Washington Spirit has seven players on this national team roster because of that, because they did so, so well. Um, a, a few other players that uh, kind of stand out on this list, at least for me, besides the big superstars, I mean, this is a big su superstar, defender Becky Sauerbronn. She is not called into this list. She was called into Australia at the end of 2021. Um, not necessarily does this mean that Becky is off by any means, like, like you mentioned, Sandra, but it just provides a different look at the defenders and the back line for this national team. So when you look at the list of defenders, Alana Cook, Abby Dahlkamper, Tierna Davidson, Emily Fox, Naomi Gurma, Sophia Huerta, Kelly O'Hara, and Emily Sonnet. Uh, Kelly O'Hara, a huge veteran that is back on this roster, and she's made it very clear that she's not going anywhere if it's up to her. Um, but when you look at this back line and, and really center backs, Naomi Gurma, a number one overall draft pick for this roster, could she be a potential slot in alongside Tierna Davidson to learn so much in this camp? Because who are these young players going to learn from if not Becky Sauerbronn? So I think it not only is there a bit of a hole without Becky Sauerbrom, but what veteran defender is going to step up and say, I'm going to take on that role of being the most vocal, of being the leader in the back line, of being the most consistent rock ahead of our goalkeepers and, and our last line of defense before you get to our, our goalkeeper in, in net. Who is that going to be? Is it going to be Abby Dahlkamper or Tierna Davidson, Emily Sonnet? I'm not sure. And I think maybe that's what Flacco Andonofsky is looking at. He's saying without someone who is a solid rock star in the back, like Sauerbronn, who can step up and take on that role. Uh, but definitely a number of absences that stood out right from the get-go. Um, and I, I'm glad we're chit-chatting about them because they need to be addressed and we'll see how the future of this team looks, you know, moving Yeah, forward. there was a lot of that, like in the, in the, you know, when this was announced in the release, I think that was one of the things that maybe stood out were some of the absence. A lot of people look at that first, maybe who the, who the absences are versus who actually got, uh, got called in and that was part of some of the questions that that Andonofsky had to field uh, during the media availability and and I'm I'm with you on that though. I really do think that it's a it's a scenario that uh he welcomes and the coaching staff welcomes and um you know he talked a little bit about Sarbon and again all those conversations that he's having with these veterans and alluded to the fact that Sarbon was one of the players that that had a medical procedure uh during the off season so that it was in her best interest to to continue mm -hmm. to sort of uh you know recover from that but in not having her or including her in this January camp that that's probably something that they're going to be looking at as a coaching staff like who is going to sort of take the reins of that back line. Who's going to, you know, sort of stick out a little bit more in terms of, uh, the leadership, right. Um, along those lines, because to be that sort of kind of vocal organizational type of center back, um, I'm not too sure who's going to be tapped, you know, right. Or tasked with that, with that sort of, of role, but, um, it's always going to be noticeable, right. When the captain's not on the roster. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of like the opposite of that, like not, not so much the biggest absences, but perhaps what's considered the, bigger the biggest call-ups right the biggest names or or maybe the names that stood out a little bit uh on this roster when you sort of move past the absences and say okay that's who's missing but who got called in i mean we have to we have to look at probably maybe the the newest names in this one although they've had a little bit of experience in the past with senior camps it's been a little while but newly drafted naomi Girma and jalen how they both went one and two respectively in the nwsl 20 
2022 draft. They got called into these January camps. We've mentioned uh, three players who have yet to actually get a cap with the national team. We've talked a lot about Aubrey Kingsbury, now Trinity Rodman. Naomi Girma is also included in that as well. Despite maybe having some experience in the past for Kingsbury and for Girma with senior level uh uh, camps, they haven't got that national team camp yet, right? Mm-hmm. And then we're also starting to see the con- we're talking a lot about continuity, right? The continuation of things, but we're seeing Margaret Purse named on these rosters and she's being listed as a forward. And while we're talking about continuity, that's probably one of my other favorite things that's <laughs> happening with this January camp roster as well. That that wasn't just that wasn't just left behind in 2021. They're keeping that energy moving forward in 2022 by listing Margaret Purse as a forward on the United States women's national team. So I'm very, very excited for that. And, you know, to see somebody like Morgan Gatra uh, get reintroduced to the national team, that's also a big one, I think, for us here at Attacking Third as well. Because while we were covering the Chicago Red Stars, in their uh, NWSL season, they were one of two teams, right, Lisa, that we ended up having to talk about the most during the season because they were one of two teams that made it all the way and played every single game during the 2021 season, every single playoff game and uh, the championship final included. Uh, But it goes without saying, I think, with covering a player like that on our time at attacking third, she's someone that we got to speak to a little bit during their Red Stars playoff push. But this is a player who put together a phenomenal club season with the Chicago Red Stars, a team that lost Julie Ertz within uh, 30 minutes of the regular season in NWSL. And despite losing a player like Julie Ertz, Chicago's midfield always looked like a midfield that was elite, that it was a midfield that was very difficult to break down, number one, and also very difficult uh, to sort of play through and play up against. So having this player still in the mix for this team in 2021 and to sort of see her get this call back into the United States women's national team, maybe it's not so surprising for people who were, you know, having to watch the Chicago Red Stars, uh, you know, in, in a close lens. And maybe it's also not too surprising for people who know this player's history with the national team. We're talking about a player who has two World Cups under her belt with the senior level national team and also participated in the 2016 Olympics with them as well. So to sort of see her uh, reintroduction to this team, I think is also should be considered one of the big, big call-ups in this one as well. A number of them. I know as soon as uh, Morgan Gatraw's release came out, it's the first thing I said to you. Are you are you pumped about this? Uh, this is huge. We even talked about it at the end of last season that she's a player that eyes need to be looked at on her because she kept Chicago alive throughout the entirety of the 2021 season. And Chicago Red Stars midfield was a force to be reckoned with. And it has been for a number of years. But Morgan Gatral truly became the backbone of that midfield. So I'm glad you got to to shout her out. Um, Sandra, when we did our wish list for this January camp, we added Naomi Gurma and Jalen Howell, the two newest draft picks in the NWSL 2022 draft, most recent one that just happened. We added them to our wish list. Um, Jalen Howell, she was called up last year in 2021 for the She Believes Cup. So she's, um, uh, um, I'm almost going to say a consistent feature here, a, a name stay, just in terms of younger players as they go. She has consistency in this sense. Um, and she also has a cap under her belt with this senior national team. Now, Naomi Gurma was one that we were hoping would get called in, but we weren't entirely sure because going from the college game to the professional game is a big jump. And it does take a lot of players some time to adjust, especially on the defensive end of things when you're going up against some of the best, biggest, smartest attackers in the world. I mean, even like Christine Sinclair. So for Naomi Gurma, that's a a chance for her in the NWSL to really show her skill. So we weren't sure if Vlatko Andonofsky was going to let her get some time in the professional NWSL league before calling her in. He did not. And I'm very, very happy happy about this because Naomi Gurma is a defender that I think can really make a difference for the United States. Um, It's her second full women's national team camp call up. She did attend in 
October of 2020 uh, with this team. She was named 2020 U.S. Soccer Young Female Player of the Year, and she was the 2021 Pac-12 Defender of the Year for Stanford, um, and then went number one overall, which also we weren't entirely sure about that, if it was going to be between Jalen Hal or Naomi Gurma, and Gurma ends up doing it. Um, so Gurma being called in as a defender, the depth uh, for this national team at the defensive position is constantly growing and to have that competition and that battle as defenders to continuously get better and show your consistent strengths on the field is, is really huge and, and makes for a promising world cup run. I hope for this United States team. Um, uh, another player is Trinity Rodman because this was a nice surprise, a pleasant surprise to see her on this roster. She is the youngest one, although she was NWSL 2021 Rookie of the Year. She had a fantastic season with the Washington Spirit. Uh, we just talked about Gurma and Howell as the two most recent draft picks. Uh, Hal, 22, Naomi Gurma, 21, Trinity Rodman, 19 years old, being called into this camp, um, has a lot of young accolades already to her name, but she does not have a cap with the senior national team. Um, so this is her first senior national team call up, uh, and she is the only player on this roster that is the first time that she is here. Every other player who, uh, Aubrey Kingsbury, who doesn't have a cap yet, she's also been at this camp. So it's also that. wild. It's also just wild to like look at Trinity Rodman on this roster and know that like you're actually technically still eligible for the U20 World Cup yes. as well. <laughs> yes. And if that U20 World Cup didn't get canceled due to the pandemic, she probably would have been there. Uh, it's, it's actually crazy to think about, but she's, Similar to jumping college and going right to the pros, she's skipping the U-20 World Cup and, and joining the senior team. Um, but it's just so crazy because we've seen Rodman play an entire year in the NWSL, but she's the youngest on <laughs> this roster, but has more professional experience than two of uh, the other players on this roster. Um so lots of young talent and at different positions, right? Rodman's a forward, yeah. Burma is a defender, midfielder in Jalen Howe, goalkeeper in Kingsbury. It's it's a lot. I'm I'm really impressed with Vlako Andonovsky yeah. and how much he he dug to find different players to come into this. And of course, Morgan Gattrall and Morgan Weaver being called in last minute. I think that's very exciting for those two. And, and they are considered big call-ups because it's almost a last minute thing that they didn't initially make the list. Um, but things change and opportunity presents itself. I just hope that those players can take this opportunity and really make the most of it. Yeah, for sure. I, I love that. I love that. Like if we're looking at like biggest call-ups, if we have to do like a big, a big three, right? Or like a big, big yeah. four based on position. Like you have one in each of those yeah. categories. So it's like probably like big standout call up for us. Like uh, Aubrey Kingsbury getting back in the mix at goalkeeper. You know, obviously uh, for defenders, we talked a lot about Naomi Girma. Uh, midfielder, we're hyped for for Morgan Gatra and, and seeing somebody like Trinity Rodman to sort of, uh, you know, stand out on that uh, that front line for the forward core is, is really, really exciting as, as the team heads into this January camp. Um, unfortunately, like we said at the top of the episode, this is just a January camp. There are no uh, fixtures or international friendlies that will be taking place place uh, around this January camp, but it's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on for sure, because she believes cup is right around the corner coming up in February. So I won't be too surprised if we hop back on this podcast and react to the, she believes cup roster and maybe try to connect the dots a little bit. Yeah. Sort of take a look and see who left an impression out of these January camps as we look ahead to February and the, she believes cup. Um, Sandra, also a player we didn't mention, Mallory Pugh. She's back on this roster. She didn't travel to Australia at the end of 2021, um, had a good run with Chicago during the NWSL season, and, and she's back. So that's another player in, in the front line that hopefully can score goals, right? I mean, challenge the defenders and, and do a lot, but you're right. This is just the January camp roster. It's not the She Believes Cup roster. So we'll see if there's any similarities, differences, and I think it'll be obvious who makes that She Believes Cup roster 
how they performed at this January camp because we don't get a lot of eyes and ears in this January camp except when rosters and and kind of the how the rest of the year goes based on player performance and who else gets called up. Well, we're going to pay attention to it. And uh, as the She Believes Cup looms closer, we'll maybe try to make some predictions there as well. I want to thank everybody for listening, joining along with us as always. If you've enjoyed what you heard, you can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. If you leave us a five star review, you can leave us a five star review now on Spotify. And if you have any questions for us, you can leave us a five star review with a question on Apple Podcasts. And Lisa and I will answer it as part of our mailbag segment we're also available as video so subscribe to us on youtube visit youtube.com slash attacking third and we'll be back on monday with more coverage and exclusive interviews for sandra and lisa roman this was attacking third